Welcome. This session is offered by the Cornell Small Farms Program with support from the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant and the New York Farm Viability Institute. You can find out more about this project and access all of our resources at cornellmushrooms.org backslash viability. The focus of this project is support new and established mushroom growers to develop viable uh, mushroom enterprises. Much of the work has been focused on log-grown shiitake, which is one of the most profitable mushrooms that can be grown outdoors. But the lessons uh, in this module and other modules apply to specialty mushrooms across the board. Today we're going to talk about goals. If you're interested in learning about how to produce these mushrooms, you can find more resources at cornellmushrooms.org. So when we work with growers across New York and the northeastern U.S., we find that uh, many common goals float to the surface. When we ask people why are you here, why are you interested in growing and selling mushrooms, you can see listed here on the slide some of the common things that we hear. Uh, if you'll notice, these goals are relatively broad and not very specific to an individual, but are things that uh, could happen in many different places, many different times. Often folks want to pay the land taxes, that's why they get into farming, or they want to farm and sell products to reduce the tax burden on their property. Many come to us with interest in doing something with their woods productively, and ideally making some extra income, often as an aside to an existing job. Many folks are looking at small diversified farms and seeking interesting enterprises that will attract markets and sales to their farm. Um, a lot of people are interested in having mushrooms, and access to fresh mushrooms isn't always available in many communities, and so this brings people to mushroom cultivation. So whatever your goals are, what's important is to start out and just brainstorm these different ideas. Write them down on a sheet of paper, and just consider broadly what you're interested in. Why are you actually pursuing a specialty mushroom enterprise? And, you know, this might seem really basic, but it's amazing how many times we interact with beginning farmers who uh, get into something, invest a lot of time and energy and resources to building it up, and aren't even clear about exactly why they're doing it. So while we can brainstorm a list, what we want to do is also look at this list and dig a little bit deeper. One of the most important ways we can do that is to question and critique our own assumptions that are inherent in the goals that we initially express. An example I always like to give is that often people who purchase a piece of property are interested in putting a pond in. It's something that comes up time and time again. People want a pond. And so wanting a pond itself is not really a goal. There's underlying assumptions and desires within that express goal. For instance, do you want a pond for swimming or fishing or recreating on a boat? Do you want a pond for wildlife habitat? Do you want a pond for the aesthetic value that it provides? In many cases, uh, there's multiple reasons for wanting a certain goal. But the question is, what's most important? So if wildlife habitat is most important, then perhaps a pond is not the best option because it might be too expensive. The landscape or the soil profile may not really support a pond. It might be more appropriate to put in a wetland or a habitat garden of some sort. So what we want to do is step back and say, well, if my goal is to make money, well, how much money am I trying to make? What are my real specific aspirations and how can I achieve those by getting really specific about my goals? So if we get specific, maybe we could start to drill deeper and say, well, I want to get into a mushroom enterprise. And what I want to do, and we're going to look at, you know, talking about log-grown shiitake in this case, I want to uh, grow a thousand logs. And so when we uh, look back and consider how we go to a thousand log enterprise, often growers will inoculate 350 logs every year for about three years until they get to about a thousand logs in production. Because after three years, a, a log will be uh, no good for, for production, and so you start to cycle out logs as you produce. So inoculating about 350 logs a year should maintain an operation around 1,000 logs that are actually fruiting and in production. Okay, so this is good. There's more detail here. There's some numbers. I can set a target. I can set a goal and say, all right, I can, do, uh, I can shoot for doing 350 logs a year. In the same way, the question might be, you know, how many pounds of mushrooms do I want to produce? And that might be a better measure, perhaps, of my goal, because I'm interested at the end in not how many logs I have, but actually how many mushrooms I'm producing. So I could go back and say, well, actually what I want to do is sell 10 pounds a week from the months of June through October. And 
if I look at the Cornell research and the information, I know actually what I need is about 40 logs a week in order to do that. And if I further look at this, if I want to sell 10 pounds a week, I actually may only need to manage a total of 300 to 400 logs. And so I actually don't need to inoculate 350 each year, maybe only 100 or 150. Uh, even further, we could drill deeper and look at this a different aspect, that I want to make $5,000 gross in sales, and I want to sell 500 pounds of mushrooms. By setting that goal, I can actually look at my receipts at the end of the year and see if I've uh, made that goal or if I'm marching towards it year after year. It's actually aligning with my idea of making income. And really, we can see these three goals are sort of different iterations of the same thing. So often it's good for growers to start with, well, what kind of income do you want to make or how much volume do you want to produce? And then break that down. So 500 pounds of mushrooms, well, how many weeks am I producing those 500 pounds? And how many pounds a week do I need to then produce? And how many logs do I need per week in order to produce those pounds? So you can come at it from either angle, but the important thing here is that we have numbers associated and that we have some goals that then we can set some targets and some timelines as we think about how to develop our enterprise. So if we drill deeper, uh, there's another aspect we can look at, which is sort of the workflow. When we think about all the different parts and all the different little details that have to come together so that we can do something like increase our logs in production until we get to 1,000 logs. So inherent in this sentence at the top of the screen is that I need to inoculate 350 logs each April. Well, in order to do that, I need to gather materials, order the spawn, which is the mycelium that we're going to inoculate the logs with, I need to find volunteers or maybe hire help. And I need to schedule these sessions because if I don't, there's chances are I'm not going to be able to accomplish my goal on time. And then if I further drill down, well, I need to get these logs uh, on farm from some kind of source. And if I want to inoculate logs in April, well, I better start thinking about my logs in the new year, perhaps around January. And that could look like many different details. It could look like you know, I actually need to sharpen my chainsaw and get my materials together to actually cut the logs. Maybe I even need to take a chainsaw safety course and actually learn how to use a chainsaw. Um, or if I'm buying logs in, you know, I could call those companies. And I want to call them not in January, but several months in advance to schedule a delivery. Maybe I need to place an order with them or confirm that order. And I need to line up time to meet the delivery and make sure that the logs are up to my standards. So we can kind of start to break down any of these sentences, whether we start with a production goal in terms of logs uh, or in terms of pounds or in terms of dollars and start to question all the little details and develop what we might call a workflow. And you can do this a, a variety of different ways. What I like to do is really just write down the sentences, get specific with the numbers, and then start to break each of these things down. So if I need to inoculate 300 logs each April, what are the other parts to actually accomplishing that? task. And I can further break those down over time. What this allows us to do is work out uh, a, a plan so that each year we have something that we start to establish as a workflow. So for instance, now I know from doing this type of analysis that each December I'm cutting logs and I, or I'm placing orders with a local tree company. My goal is to have those logs arrive, whether it's through my own hands or from a purchase, in January and February. I then inoculate those logs with uh, other people, you know, six sessions, ideally lasting four to five hours, and we schedule them in advance on Sunday afternoons in the months of March and April. We might schedule one or two extra ones to account for weather or some other kind of unexpected change. Then I know I need to place these logs in the wood, I need to cover them to make sure they're protected, and then I could start to soak my first logs the following year, and the first year I might soak 40 a week, the second year I might soak 80, and the third 120 as I grow my enterprise. So goals can seem abstract at the beginning, but they do two really important things. And the first thing is they really help us define what's important. They help us clarify some target goals based on the numbers that we put into our goals. And then they help us, as we pull apart these individual goal sentences, we start thinking about what are the other parts of this puzzle? What are the things I need to do in order to reach my goal? And often those goals are a year out or several months out or several years out. And so we need to be planning ahead and putting something down on paper. Uh, really critical in this process is this kind of teeter-totter, this seesaw 
uh, this balancing act we do in farming between the actual production and the marketing or the sales because at the end of the day you're not going to uh, meet your goals assuming you're getting into commercial farming without actually selling your product and often we find growers across all different types of enterprises develop really good comprehensive technical skills there on the left they overcompensate for that and then they produce a lot of really nice products but they have no plan for how to sell it where to market it and so that becomes incredibly stressful when you have product that has a limited shelf life and needs to get out to markets. So we really want to balance this scale. And as we're thinking and planning, it's not just about our production goals, but it's also about our marketing goals. So my marketing goal might be to uh, increase our Facebook uh, followers or to increase the visitors to our farm store or to uh, attend three farmers markets and see if I can generate enough sales to justify my time. So don't just think about your goals in terms of production but also in terms of markets and constantly be recognizing that the time you allocate to planning for these should be relatively even. So this chart shows some of the estimated hours of labor uh, based on previous data for a thousand log mushroom operation if we were growing shiitakes on logs. Don't take these as uh, exact. These are averages across several farms in the Northeast. They give you a good sense. These are beginning farms, so a lot of the labor time should go down as these enterprises mature. But it really gives you a, a good starting point to really think this through. And we try to kind of capture the different steps in the process and what months of the year they might actually happen. And it gets really tricky over time because we can't really say, well, it actually takes X amount of hours per week as we develop this enterprise because in reality, there's times of the year when there's more work to be done and times of the year when there's less work to be done. So it's not always a balanced equal amount of time per week. But we can say some general things. And what's important to understand as we think about goals and think about enterprises is how big a factor time is. So you really want to step back and think about what do you have as, as far as time and how you want to allocate that and if you're going to have the available time to put into the enterprise at the different times of year that we have. So how much time do I have and, and, and when I can actually allocate the time is really important. Because for instance in a simplified form to manage mushroom logs you might be soaking your logs three days a week and you might go out there before your day job and put the logs in the tank on Monday. And that means you need to come back on Tuesday morning and take those logs out and put more logs in. And then you might need to take them out again on Wednesday and put more logs in. And then that cycle usually tends to transition into harvesting. And that might actually be on a daily basis or sometimes multiple times a day. So you just have to start to think about, well, if I'm working a day job, can I allocate time in the morning uh, to soak or to check on my mushrooms? Can I do it at lunchtime? Can I do it at the end of the day? Do I have other help or other stakeholders in my enterprise that can help me check on things? Because mushrooms require some constant monitoring. It doesn't require generally a lot of time. Once you're in production, to it's not prolonged amounts of time that it takes, but it takes little spurts of time throughout the week in order to successfully cultivate the mushrooms. And so it's tricky because you can't always schedule it. For instance, if it's a very hot week, you may need to spend more time monitoring your mushrooms to make sure you harvest them at the optimum time because they tend to mature quicker. If it's a very wet week, you may have to spend more time doing pest management because you may have an influx of, of slugs or other pests uh, affecting the quality of your mushrooms. So the question to really mull over here with your goals is how do I want to spend my time? When do I have time and, and how do I work that out in terms of my enterprise? So it's really important during this whole process to be honest with who you are or who the other stakeholders in your enterprise is. It's okay to have faults. It's okay to not be perfect. And it's important to reckon with and recognize where you do well and where you don't do well. So if record keeping or organization are challenging for you, how am I going to compensate that for my enterprise? Because ultimately, if I want to be profitable, I have to keep good records. I need to know what's going on. I need to be able to look at my receipts and know if I've met my goals. So if that's a challenge for you, maybe you're going to outsource that or find help from someone who is better at doing that. If you're really someone who wants to do the grunt work and move the logs around the woods and cut the logs and do all this kind of thing, uh, but you don't want to do the marketing, it's not appealing to you, then you need to find someone else to do it or you need to figure out a way that that's going to work. And I think the more you can be honest with what you're good at and what you're not so good at, 
the better your goal setting is going to be and the better your enterprise is going to be long term. Another factor to consider in goals is, well, while I'm setting goals and I want 10 pounds a week or I want to make 5,000 a year or, or grow 500 pounds of mushrooms, what happens when that doesn't happen? What happens when you have those little minor catastrophes or those interruptions or those unexpected things that are inevitable, especially as we get into farming enterprises as a whole? So what is my contingency plan? If I set up accounts with restaurants, Am I prepared to deal with the week when I don't have those mushrooms to sell to those restaurants? How do I make sure that I've covered myself? If I have CSA members or a subscription service, how am I going to make sure that I can compensate or otherwise explain to my customers when I don't have the mushrooms? If I oversleep or if I have to stay late at work, how am I going to make sure that those mushrooms are harvested and that I don't ruin my crop because I wasn't able to be there at the right time? And so thinking through in the goals process too, well, what are the possible ways I could fail is going to really set you up for success in the long term because then you can consider other ways to compensate for those inevitable things that are going to show up. So we think about those things as, as consequences of just farming. How are we going to deal with them ahead of time and imagine them before they actually happen? So these are some things for you to think about as you're working through your goals. It's time to put your pen to paper. We have a very simple worksheet uh, uploaded to the website. We call this the mini business plan. Now, if you really want to develop a, a larger farm uh, enterprise, uh, maybe that's composing of multiple crops or maybe just a single crop, uh, you go through a pretty extensive process to develop this. But just for starters, what we want to do is just jot down some ideas and think through and answer some questions. So we have these set up with the kind of basic questions, the why, what, who, where, when, and how. So why are you doing this? What are your values and your goals that are influencing you getting into mushroom production? What is your product exactly? Yes, it's mushrooms, but what are the qualities? What are the selling characteristics? How would you actually describe this product to your customers? What differentiates it from other products? Your markets. Who are the people that want to buy your mushrooms? Who are the people you're going to reach out to? Where are you going to sell? What are the primary outlets? And what are the secondary outlets for your mushrooms? Really important to distinguish between the easy outlets for you, the things that work with your schedule, versus the ones that might be more challenging, even if they're more profitable. So for instance, if I can drop off a bag of mushrooms on my way to work, while I may not make as much as standing at farmer's market in terms of a per pound price, I save a lot of labor because it's it's right outside my normal travel route uh, versus going to farmer's market may take a lot of extra time and energy. When we're starting to think about that workflow and that timeline, if I want to reach a certain goal in the next year, what do I need to do? What are the steps as I march back through time to make sure that I do something this week and next week and the following week so I can actually reach that goal at the end of the time? And then how? We have to think about our finances. How are we going to finance the upstart? How is this going to work for us? What are the potential pitfalls as we go? So we encourage you to fill this out. You're welcome to contact us if you want feedback on your mini business plan. But just starting to go through these questions and talk with the different stakeholders in your enterprise is going to be a great start to getting yourself going in specialty mushroom cultivation. Thanks for attending this session. If you're interested in more information in other sessions, you can visit us at cornellmushrooms.org backslash viability.